There are so many lighting techniques that I use all the time now, but took me a long time to learn. Hopefully I can help you guys pick them up a little earlier in your career than I did. And we're gonna be using the Nanlite Forza 500 II for this video, which it's not only one of my favorite lights, but definitely one of the best lights released in 2023. We're sponsoring this video, let's see what it can do. The way we're gonna do this is I've got a Canon C70 and a monitor over here so I can Keep an eye on what's going on. And Ala is gonna be modeling for us. So you can take a seat right here and we'll just kind of be going through a few different lighting setups, different modifiers. But first we've got to control the light in here. There are big windows in our studio. So step one is I gotta close them all. First thing before we worry about settings or lighting modifiers is just the placement of the light in the room. A big thing is moving your subject away from the wall. So right now, Ella is sitting, I don't know, like two or three feet away, and the light on her is kind of a similar brightness to what's happening in the background. Also, the depth of field is about the same, right? Both are more or less in focus. So we can make a big difference if we take your stool, let's move it forward. And now all of a sudden we have a big difference in the ratios. The subject is about one or two stops brighter than the background and you have this clear separation, you know what to focus on. Both the depth of field is focused and your lighting is emphasizing that. This is something I see a lot of the time when people set up their YouTube videos, they're just sitting against the wall and you don't get this sense of separation. So adding this depth makes a huge improvement to any setup. This one I've covered before when I talked about the difference between YouTube videos and cinematic videos, like, you know, narrative or commercial. So the setup right now, I've adjusted things a bit. I added a bounce card so there's a little bit more fill and everything on our subject is looking very kind of neutral. Like there's no deep shadows, just under her chin a little bit, but more or less everything is light and bright and you can see what's going on. This is what I'd think of as more of either a like interview setup or a beauty setup you can see everything, it's all well lit. Now the biggest difference between this and a movie is really like kind of the placement of the lights. So I'm gonna move them way over to the side. And it really made my life harder today by not using a softbox because now I have to move two stands every time. But if you've got a softbox at home, it's basically the same idea. Lights coming on, watch your eyes. All right, so now, Ali, you're gonna rotate with me a little bit. I've moved the light over to the side, and since this is now a movie, you don't acknowledge the camera anymore. So this difference is enormous. I mean, I haven't changed the overall setup much, but we have a really different feeling. Most of the time in any movie, the light is coming from behind the subject, and it makes a huge difference. We could actually go even further here. We can like almost move the light behind the subject and we still have like a really beautiful, valid lighting setup. But also notice on this, so Ala, look into the lens. This feels like too dark when you actually are seeing straight into the eyes. You would want like a catch light here or something. Look off camera again. But as soon as she's off camera, it works great. The way that I think about it is if the subject is acknowledging the camera, looking into the lens like I am now, then you're probably gonna have the light coming from the front. If they're looking off camera, pretending it doesn't exist, then you want the light to be coming either from the side or behind. When LED lights first became popular, a lot of us were buying like 100, 200 watt lights. There's a really good reason you want a light way brighter than you think you need, like all the time. So for example, with the Forza 500 that we're using today, we have a lot of headroom. This means you're usually only using it at like 50 or 80% power. That's the sweet spot, that's where you wanna be. So for example, in our shot here, we can now see out the window a bit. We can see the real window right here, and then we can see it in the mirror as well. And Actually, it's funny, you can see this ND effect around my blurry finger. We want to get it all darker like that. So we basically want blue coming through the window. To do that, we have to turn up our light. So right now we're only at 25%. We're gonna crank that all the way to 100 right now. And now we're able to bring back the blue outside of those windows, much better balance to the exposure. So now we'll look at a new setup. This isn't about balancing the window anymore. Now we just want to like balance the ratios, get a nice fill inside of the room. This is something I do all the time. First of all, turn off our 500. It's not going to be the key light. So we've got the Nanlite Forza 60B, much smaller. We're just going to crank it up to 100. And this is our new key light. Now, since we still have this very powerful 500, what are we going to do with it? Well, I'm going to fill in that background and all we have to do is point it at a white wall or at the ceiling and crank it to 100. And now we've got this kind of soft fill that you really can only add with a big light source like that. Like look how much of the wall it's actually taking up. It's kind of like having a 
20 foot soft box here. And this is a trick we use all the time just to give us that general lift to the overall exposure. Meanwhile, our key light can kind of operate on its own. There's a lot of times you wanna turn up the power, like if you're adding thicker diffusion, maybe you're gonna bounce the light before it goes through diffusion, or you just wanna move the light further away. So whichever light you're thinking about picking up next, go one step brighter than you think you need. All the advice in this video can be used with whatever light package you're working with, but some lights are nicer to work with than others. Nan Light sponsored this video and the Forza 500 Mark II is amazing. The first Forza 500 was great. I used it all the time, but they've made some big improvements here. Like the single-handed locking yoke, it holds incredibly strong, but you don't need two hands to adjust it. There's also a more pronounced curve in this metal bracket that attaches to the stand, so it's easier to go all the way down or all the way up. It's extremely flexible, but the biggest improvements happened around the ballast. This is really well thought out and designed, so now it can sit flat on the floor like this. Both of the cables come out of the top, along with where the power button is. It has full DMX support. It can also run off of just two batteries, so you can just clip them to the side like that, and you can run this thing at full power, and you've got an insane portable kit that you can use outside. Power cables are thicker and more durable. We've got a stronger handle on top, and the way that it clamps onto the stand is very smart. Now it can go as wide as you need. This is basically just a normal super clamp, and it just clips into the back so you can safely secure it to anything. Check out the Forza 500 II in the link below, and thanks again to Namlight. We all love soft light. It's been a huge trend in cinematography ever since we moved away from film, where you needed bigger, brighter lights, so they were usually hard and less diffused. The thing that took me a long time to realize is almost the only factor in making your light softer is the size of the source. So take a look at these shadows. Overall, the light is soft, but you can still see strong shadows on that side. Let's move to a much bigger source. This is five by seven compared to four by four. See how much softer it is. So now everything's basically the same. The light is just filling up this larger diffusion, but it's the same material. And you can see that the softness on her face is much softer. The key thing here is the size of the light like relative to the distance of the subject. So the further away the light is, the bigger the source needs to be if you want it to be soft. A small softbox is still soft up close, but as you move further, the diffusion needs to get bigger. Here's a quick one. A lot of the time it's helpful to light a little bit from above instead of just from the side. So right now, light's going straight onto Ella. The problem is if you look at the wall behind her, even though the light on her is pretty soft, we have these strong shadows against the wall with objects in the background. When you move to above, so now that it's a bit above her, we both get more flattering shadows. They kind of go under her chin. So it just helps with that separation from subject and background. Next up, bouncing light. I see a lot of silver reflectors out there. By default, I see people starting off with silver. And I can see why, it's very bright, it has the most output, but it also looks really fake. Plus whenever it moves, it kind of creates this like ripply effect. So I think the default should more often be white. It has less output, but that also makes it look a lot more natural, a lot softer. And I think you'll agree this fill still does a lot. There's no bounce, add some bounce, white is just, by far the one you should be using the most often. Never use gold, I don't know why that exists. I'm sure you're already matching your color temperatures, like daylight outside and tungsten indoors, but it's actually more important to me that you're matching your tint, meaning green or magenta. Unfortunately, the Forza 500 can support that. So looking at our image right now, this is just the Forza 500 going through diffusion. Looks pretty nice, uh, but let's say I wanna lift the rest of the scene and I'm gonna turn on the lights in the background. So the fluorescent lights and the nan light are both daylight balanced, but the nan light is much more accurate and these fluorescents tint a little bit green. So we can match them by adjusting the light. Our fluorescent lights in the studio are actually pretty well balanced. I bought more expensive ones just for that purpose, but in the real world, sometimes it can be way off. So having that adjustment on your light is really helpful. Let me know in the comments, what is some lighting advice that you'd give your younger self? What do you wish you learned earlier? Because for me, it's a lot. If you found this video helpful, check out my YouTube versus cinematic video, which goes through a lot of other techniques to change from a flatter, simpler lighting to something a little more dramatic and why you would choose those two. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.